Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be continuing our Get Good at Blender series. And today is level three. So do remember to look at the previous levels and also remember that there's lots of playlists on my channel for different courses to help you with different aspects in Blender. So do make sure you've been through the beginner series and you could look at my website which has a bit of a structure and an order to some of them. Many thanks to those who watched an advert for me. Also to those that donate and many thanks to my patrons. That all makes a difference to this site and keeps all those courses free. So the game is as usual. I show you the object, perhaps give a hint and then you have a go yourself and then I'll show you how I made it. This time I've tried to make them objects that are more relatable. Can't always do that, but I have this time. So here's your first item. Hopefully a nice easy one to start off with. Now my hint is, which may be a surprise, but bevel is a useful command here. Don't worry if that's confusing, just see how you get on with it. Okay, so I'll move this across to the side. Shift A to add mesh cylinder. And in the box down the bottom here, which you can open up with the arrow there, I'm going to change it to 12. And that should be the same number. It's always good to have something divisible by four in case you want to mirror across the X and Y axis. So let's just grab that above the floor, scale it up a bit, so we're roughly the same size. And of course I can go to side view to help me with that. And I'm scaling with Shift Z this time, so it doesn't scale in the Z axis. Okay, so at this point I have changed the scale slightly, so if I press N on my keyboard and go up to the item, you can see that the scale has changed. So it'd be a good idea to set that or apply that, so Control A and then Scale. Now when I go into edit mode, it won't have any unusual anomalies. There are times where you don't want to apply the scale, but generally speaking, a good rule for beginners is to apply scale and often rotation if you don't want your tools to act strangely. So Control R across the middle here and then use my wheel to bring it up to two and double left click. Now I can scale those out into position, so somewhere around there and I can look and see if it's the same. Now this is where the bevel command comes in handy. Is I could press Control R and then bring this down and then bring this out and try and match them up. And I'd have to do that for both sides, down the bottom here as well. But I can just press Control B to bevel them to somewhere around there. So now I want to extrude this out. If I press E then S, it will extrude out from the center. So it's going in an unusual angle and I don't want that. If I press Shift Z, which in this case works well, but to get used to the process, I'm going to go up to the top here and change it to individual origins. And using individual origins like this, you know it's going to work from those individual origins each time because it's taking the individual origins of the different parts. Hopefully that makes sense. So we've got a rough barrel shape there. I'll go to the top face now. So three to go into face mode, click on the top face, I to inset, and then E to extrude to bring it down and we've got a nice barrel shape. Now I've made these a bit thinner and I actually like the chunky look of these ones over here. So what I can do is select this edge loop by Alt left clicking on one of the lines going across the loop, Shift Alt left click on this one to select this edge loop as well and Control plus will grow my selection. Now it's added the ones on either side to that as well. Now with individual origins selected, I can press Scale Z and it will scale them with their individual origins. And now it's a bit more chunky. And there we have a nice looking barrel. Okay, so let's hide those. So here's the next one. Now it's getting a bit more tricky, but see how you get on. The key to this one is the mirror tool. Okay, so you may have found this one a bit harder, but the main thing is just to break it down by areas and work on those, then try and add to it. I'll explain what I mean. So I'll move this across to the side and start afresh down here. So Shift A to add and start with a cube. Most of my shapes that I do start with a cube. I'll scale that down a bit and move it into position so it's going to be the hilt of the sword. So I'll go down a bit more, still keeping my cube proportions so my scale is still uniform, but I can reset the scale at this point if you like, so Control A to set the scale. If the scale's uniform, as in they're all the same, then generally the tools will all work as you'd expect. Now what I need to do now is use the mirror tool and you'll notice that this can not only mirror in the X, but it can also mirror in the Y. So we only need to make a quarter of the shape. This time I'm going to use a new plugin. So if you go to edit preferences, add-ons and type in mirror, you can see that there's the auto mirror tool there and tick that and it's really useful. It speeds things up a lot. If I now go to edit, 
you can find the auto mirror tool there. And let's start with the X axis and do a mirror there. Now remember with the mirror, it always goes around your pivot point or center point or origin point. So it's going to cut a line in here for me and create the other side. So if I press auto mirror now, you can't see anything, but if I go into edit mode, you can see that it's cut it in half for me and made a mirror. If I go to Y now, if you choose the positive, it will be on the back side of your cube. Not that that matters too much, but I always choose the negative and press auto mirror. Then it creates it on this side. Now what that does, it does create two mirrors, not that it makes any difference, but just to smarten things up, I can close one down and then make sure the axis is both on the X and Y up here. So you can have two separate mirrors, one with X and another one with Y, or you can have one mirror and both the X and Y ticked. Just makes it a bit cleaner. Okay, so now I can start working on my chunky sword. So three to go into face mode, and let's extrude this out. And let's just go to side view, make sure that's roughly matching up. And the width is a bit wide, so I can select all. I'm still in edit mode, but I can scale in the Y just to bring it in a bit. And there we go. Now, can you see there's a slight circle to this section here? So into edit mode. So what I need to do is bring this vertex across this way. So if I press one, grab that one and press GG to edge slide. I can slide it across this edge to around there. Now what I've done, rather than just extruding this area up, I've actually inset it slightly. That means there'll be a slight gap before our blade comes out. Now this is the part where some of you may have modeled this in a different way, which I will talk about after I've made the object. So three on my keyboard to go to face mode, select that face and press I to inset. And you'll notice there's a problem. The inset is actually taking the boundary into account as well. And we can go down to our tools over here and tick on boundary to get rid of it. Now we can extrude this out and you can see it's inset slightly. I'm not sure why, but I decided to make this go up a little bit. I don't think I'll do that this time. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so I'll grab this in the Z axis again and go up to that point and then scale it in the X. Extrude it again, up to around there and scale in the X. And then lastly, we can take that one point here, G, Z, to move it upwards. Now, realistically, this is actually bad topology to do this because can you see how there is actually a triangular edge there, but it's not shown. But in order to render, it does need to render everything as triangles. So you can see when I come across to this side, it actually shows that triangle in the shading. Although when we're modeling, we're only seeing the quad. So for shapes like this, you do really need a triangle. So let's actually do that. I can select these two points with shift and press J to join them together and create that triangle. Now we're seeing exactly what Blender is showing us. And we're not going to get any glitches later on. That can be quite important when it comes to topology, which we'll talk about in later episodes. Okay, let's come around to the bottom. I think it would be best if I hide this floor, so H to hide, back into this and into edit mode. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for the handle. Let's grab this one, GG. Now we've got a circle. Let's go to face mode and inset this. In fact, I didn't inset it on here and I think it will look better if it does have an inset. So I to inset and then E to extrude and then S to scale. Let's go to front view, E to extrude, S to scale. And then what I'll do is I'll just extrude the whole bottom section like this and then go to face mode and select that face loop. There's only two, of course. And then we can extrude and scale, but not in the Z, so shift Z and scale that out. Now, interestingly, when you do that and you've mirrored twice, it can scale slightly unusually and you do need to adapt the shape, which is what I want to do anyway, because I want to select these two faces here and grab them in the Y slightly to make it slightly more circular. And this one here, grab in the Y. And in fact, let's grab this edge loop down here. So Alt left click, and I'm gonna grab Shift Z so it doesn't grab in the Z axis and just by I move it around so there's a bit more of a circle to it. So a bit more manual adjusting with this one. I think this one needs to come out as well. So GG to edge slide and then grab shift Z and pull it outwards. Okay, so a few things going on there. At the bottom here, I think it is nicer if it's slightly rounded as well. So I can grab this bottom face, G then Z and move that down. And I think it looks nicer if there is a slight taper down there. So I'll use the grow selection tool again, control plus, but actually I don't need this one, do I? So it's control minus to deselect if you've gone too far with your control plus and then grab in the Z axis. 
So there we have it, a chunky sword. And I think that one looks a bit better than the other one. And that's mainly down to these insets here. Now, some of you when making this, I'll just add a new cube over here and scale it right down and scale in the X and do my auto mirrors. Now, some of you might have thought it was better to do Control R, a whole loop cut across there, and then another one across there, and then extrude out your handle, which is working fine. But if we compare the two topology now, if I go into edit mode with both of them, you can see that this one has this extra topology down here, which we don't really need because this is still in quads and this is in quads. But generally, this is the way you do it with insets. And the reason being, if I want to add, let's say, some topology in here, I can do a loop cut in there nice and easily. And let's say I wanted to move that up a bit and scale this one in in order to make more of a taper. I can do that. But if I want to do that in here, I have to do a loop cut in here and another one in here and drag it in. And the topology starts getting very messy. So where you can, ideally, you inset your shape instead. OK, so here's the next shape. A nice straightforward shield, possibly a bit easier than the sword. Now I'll give you a hint, but perhaps it's more a preference of mine. But for this one, I actually started with the circle mesh. But don't panic if you want to do it in another way or that's too confusing. So have a go at that. OK, so let's bring this across to the side. I'll hide my ground plane and shift A to add mesh circle. I'll go to top view and actually I'll rotate this one round the X axis so that we can see the shape still. And with my circle selected, oh, and one thing I forgot to do was to change the amount of points. But we'll see how we go with the 32 and see whether we need to change it later on. At this point, I could just add the circle in again, but I'll show you ways you can change it later on. So let's use the auto mirror and mirror our circle. Now into edit mode and into vertex mode, and then let's start pulling it around. So I'll select on one of my points and press O, which is the proportional editing tool here. The default curve is this smooth curve here, so I'll change it back to the default. And just make sure it's highlighted blue like that. So O is the shortcut for that. And if I press G to grab now, I can then move these sections around. I can use my scroll wheel to change the size of the circle of influence. And I can just move these into a position that I like. Now, because I've got lots of points down the side, it takes a bit longer to move them into position. And that's why it's always best to start with the lowest poly object possible and then add points in if I need it. So I don't need all these points. So I can go across and select, let's say, these points here, delete. And instead of deleting the vertices, I can dissolve the vertices. And I'll just give that a bit more support down here and reposition these. I probably don't need as many across the top either. So I'll just delete this one or dissolve this one, I should say. OK, so we've got roughly the same shape. I suppose I'll scale it up so it's a bit more similar. And it looks like it's a bit wider as well. Now, can you see that when I scale in the X in edit mode, can you see how it actually scales just this section here? So watch that bottom vertex when I scale in the X. It wants to squeeze into the other one. So actually, to scale in the X, you press G, then X, and move it outwards. And that makes it wider. But it doesn't scale all your vertices. So you have to sort of move them across and then scale them in the X if you want to spread out your vertices as well. I'll just undo that and then move it into the correct position. OK, so I've got the nice outline shape. And I feel like this is quite a nice way of modeling objects that are fairly sort of uniformly flat. Just model it from the top down and then you extrude it backwards. OK, so we've got this outline and you'd think it would be easy enough to just press F to fill and then I to inset, but nothing's happening. And you can see when I click the boundary on that some things are happening, but it seems to be a bit confused. So I'll undo that and undo that face. What I've found with this is that you need to have an extra face. So E then Z, so extrude that out in the Z first. Otherwise, it gets a bit confused with what's going on everywhere else. So let's go back to top view with seven on my numpad. And now we should be able to fill in that face, although I've chosen the bottom face by accident. So let's choose those top vertices back to top mode and fill in that face. Now when I press I, it should end set OK. What I do have to watch out for is this corner here. So I won't go beyond those edges and overlap them like this. You can see there's a problem there. I do need to take boundary off. And there's an interesting problem here with the clipping. So I've got clipping on, but it's going over the edge there. I may just have to quickly edit that by hand. The reason I want to use the inset tool is because it will scale inwards uniformly. 
What we can do instead of the inset tool, as it seems a little untidy in this case, is the extrude and scale tool, but you can see how that's not giving me a clean scale. So we'll undo that. What you can do if you know that your object origin is right in the center, you could change this to 3D cursor, E to extrude, and then scale it down. And now it's scaling into that 3D cursor, which is a bit better Then I can scale in the Y to do it a little bit by hand at this point. But you can see some of the issues I'm getting doing this inset. Now there's a few reasons I believe this is happening. The first one could be that it's mirrored. So it's taking this kind of as the center point in a way. So it gives us a few problems. The other one is that this is quite a big n-gon. And perhaps there's other reasons that I don't understand. But whenever you come across problems like this, occasionally you have to go in and tidy things up by hand or use the different tools and the different options available to you. So instead of inset, I'm using extrude and scale and I'm using the 3D cursor as my center point. So often, a lot of the time, it is to do with just problem solving. Okay, now we can extrude this one downwards, so E then Z, and we're getting there with our shield. Now I want to mirror this to the other side, so let's select these bottom edges and move them up so that it's not such a fat shield. Remember, it's kind of doubling its width when it's being mirrored, so somewhere around there. But I will need my origin to be at the bottom here so it mirrors correctly. So there's two ways of doing that now. I can select all, G and then Z, or there is, if I go back to object mode, up in the options here, you can change origin to just move the origin. So if I press G then Z, it's moving the origin. So back into edit mode and let's click on the Z for the mirror. And now I can select all my shape with A, grab in the Z axis, move it down until it squeezes together. Now the last bit is getting a bit of a curve. Now that's a little bit tricky. The best way is probably to use something like a lattice. The easiest way and perhaps the quickest is to apply your mirror and then use proportional editing in the middle. Now before you apply modifiers, it's a good idea to copy your shape. So I'll press Shift D and X. And notice I'm actually just moving the origin now. So undo that and turn off the origin. Now let's Shift D and X, that's better. Now the reason I've created a new one is because when I press apply here, it's made it one full object. And if I change one side, it's only going to change that side. So that's called destructive modeling. And if I want to get it back, I need to chop it in half again or do the auto mirror tool again. So it's a good idea often if you're going to do something destructive to have a saved version that you could go back to. Now I can select this loop cut. So into edge mode with two, select that middle loop with alt left click. O for proportional editing, G to grab in the Z axis. Ah, now, can you see I've got a slight issue here? And that's the fact that I'm moving it around the 3D cursor still, which is over here. So let's undo that and change this to medium point, which is the default. G then Z and move it up. And we've now created a curve on our shield. There's slight issues with this and it's a good idea to go in by hand and just move some of these into position. And notice because I haven't got my mirror turned on, I need to do it on both sides. It is worth pointing out that a big end gone like this in the middle is not ideal, but it does work in this case. In future episodes, I will talk about topology and how it will work together so you can get better models that will work better with the tools. Okay, so a few issues there you might come up against that might make it a bit more tricky, but hopefully that's given you enough ideas with the knowledge that we've got already to do basic modeling. Do comment below with any thoughts and ideas that you might have for this series. So until next time, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.